Nanotechnology counts as one of the most important technologies in the 21st century. Reports on TV mostly inform about the use and cover the potential risks. The population doesn't know much about nanotechnology but accepts them in most of the cases. This is proved by two current studies of the Federal Institute for Risk Assessment. But let's start at the beginning. What are nanotechnologies? It is divided in spherical structures, for example nanoparticles and fullerenes, fibrous structures like nanotubes, extremely thin layers like nanoplates, as well as differently structured materials like aggregates and composites, which contain these objects. These were defined by ISO TS 27687 in 2008. Derived is the name by the unit 1 nanometer, which equals a millionth millimeter. To get an idea what this means, we will illustrate this with an example. If a hazelnut equals a nanometer, the earth would equal a millimeter. Nanoparticles are classified between 1 to 100 nanometers. It is also divided in anorganic nanoparticles like silica and titania, organic materials like mycels and lysosomes, including many structures of our body like the DNA helix, which is 2 nanometers wide, as well as special molecular structures like nanocarbon tubes and the already mentioned fullerenes. The problem with nanoparticles is that it doesn't behave as a homogeneous group of substances. That means that they behave like structurally different substances as well as their chemical nature is very different too. That is why any actual nanomaterial in every actual usage has to be analyzed very extensively about their risks and uses. Now that we know what nanotechnology is about, let's talk about the actual part, the usage and the risks. The key is the balance between actual use and possible risks. The topic was noticed in 2006 when a spray called Magic Nano caused breathing problems, not because of nanomaterials, but because of chemicals. Companies in turn avoided the word nano in their brand names. Scientific studies show that nanoparticles can't get through the deeper layers of healthy skin. Whether this also applies to damaged skin is not mentioned. Modern medicine, for example, isn't imaginable without nanoparticles. Nanotechnology also allows us to reach new functionalities and characteristics in materials and components because of nanosays particles gain other physical and chemical properties. Ceramics, for example, get flexible. Other elements suddenly conduct electricity or change their melting point. Nanoparticles also often react faster and stronger than larger particles. One reason for this is the greatly enlarged surface with the same staying volume but it also hides potential risks. It is used in many fields of electrical engineering, information technology and filtering methods in wastewater technology, as well as in material research and technology. Some examples are magnetic rams, which are more powerful and additionally keep their information in case of loss of power, like a computer crash, and innovations in photovoltaics, fuel cell technology and cancer therapy, can be referred to as well. Some examples for nanomaterials are dirt resistant surfaces on cars, for example alumina, which makes coatings scratch proof. Carbon black increases friction, elasticity and abrasion resistance in tires. Extremely dense durable tooth filling materials. Transparent sunscreens, which contain titania as UV filter. Antibacterial textiles. Exterior paint, which contains titania for self-cleaning surfaces. Antibacterial silver prevents the smell of sweat in textile sprays. In packaging material, nanoclay extends the shelf life of food or artificial organs, which are more friendly to the human body because of organic nanosurfaces. Also helpful in medicine are contrast agents for imaging examination procedures like computer tomography and MRI. Free nanoparticles, fullerenes and nanocarbon tubes are classified as especially questionable due to the hitherto only limited present toxicity studies. From the perspective of the Federation for Environment and Nature Conservation Germany EV, the research of risks and side effects of nanoproducts is lagging behind and dangers often get trivialized. 
nanoparticles which are tiny enough to enter the bloodstream via the gastrointestinal tract, the lungs or the skin are very critical because they could pass via the blood-brain barrier into the brain and might harm cerebral areas. A leading institute for the study of possible dangers in Switzerland is called EMPA, which belongs to ETH Zurich. Harald Krug is a toxicologist at the EMPA and couldn't find any exceptional risks in the use of free nanoparticles after 10 years of research. Nanocarbon tubes can attach themselves to long bunches which look similar to carcinogenic asbestos. In animal experiments with mice was it possible to prove the formation of precancerous conditions and lung tumors. The Federation for Environment and Nature Conservation Germany EV is even more critically about that. They refer to studies which show that the inclusion of high doses of titania causes cancer and harm brain cells in mice. They also warn that zinc oxide and titania are photoactive and able to produce free radicals. Few scientists argue against it with the fact that in studies the absorbed amount was way higher than the amount which is normally absorbed by the human body. Furthermore, they have got a very high reactivity because of their specific surface. A public discussion is requested. What also required are regulation through legislation, the freedom to choose between products with and without nanomaterials, labeling requirements, however presupposes international standardization of definition and measurement techniques, for example the since July 2007 existing REACH regulation and National Nanotechnology Initiative has set itself the task to handle these problems. I was interested in this topic because I think it's very important to know as much as possible about nanotechnologies before using them. Further, it's easier for me to talk about it because of my foreknowledge. From my point of view, the usage is way higher than the potential risks, because it's not even sure if nanotechnology is unhealthy. Furthermore, even if there are small risks, nanotechnology saves more lives by helping in medicine than it damages.